Arthur is invoked as this sleeping hero uh, who, when the when finally the country is in existential danger, he will awaken or, or he will return and he will do what's necessary and lead the people to safety or he'll turn back the aggressor or whatever. Uh, and it's, it's one of those lovely, comforting legends. Uh, and it, it, there's a lot of people at the moment, because of the last couple of years and more, people feeling in desperate need, uh, people feeling that they're not being looked after by the government or they're actually under threat from the government, that the government's working against them and that the institutions are not to be relied upon and, and are working against them. So whatever, the, the civil service, the judiciary, the police, everybody working against the people, this is a, this is a strong feeling that's out there. And so not for the first time by any stretch of the imagination, but people are, are, are imagining that this would be a time if Arthur was ever going to come back, that he might come back now. And I get, I've mentioned it numerous times. I, I get all these letters from, from people uh, who, who've seen the podcast or, or they've seen me on television in recent times talking about everything that's going on and, and they want to share their feelings about it with me and they write to me. And I've got thousands of letters like that now. And the, by far, the majority of them mention, amongst other things, uh, battles between good and evil, uh, battles between right and wrong, light and dark. For many, many people, what's going on has become something fundamental and elemental. You know, it's not about left and right or Labour and Tories. It's become good and evil for a lot of people who are writing to me. And also another unifying characteristic of many, many I, couldn't, I couldn't say it's in the majority, but it, it would certainly be half the letters, are from people of faith. People who, are, uh, who have in common the fact that they didn't take the vaccines and they didn't abide by the regulations as far as, you know, they didn't wear masks and they... And they didn't obey the diktats to not mix with their families. It's almost as though those people who had faith, their faith was effectively the vaccination that mattered. They had that in their systems long before any of the trouble came. And when the trouble came, it was their faith that protected them from what they regard as the madness, what they regard as the badness. Now, I'm only reporting that. That's just a, a feature of the content of the letter. The, the people who are writing to me have this in common and I can't help but notice it and I can't help but think that it's significant. People that went along with the rules, uh, does it suggest that they were people who, who didn't have that faith? And, you know, there is that line about, you know, when, when you take God away, people don't believe in nothing, they believe in anything. I, I, and I do wonder if the COVID adventure took up the place, filled the God-shaped hole. Things to believe, priests in the form of accepted scientists to listen to, routines to go through, mask wearing, and all the rest of it. I don't know. I just offer it up. But I love the way that these these places like Arthur Stone are there in the landscape. They've been there for thousands of years. And there's a mountain, a mountain, mountains that have been there for millions of years, hundreds of millions of years. And over the years they become, they have laid upon them the thinking and the imaginations of the people who make those landscapes their home. And so each succeeding tribe or, or each succeeding population lays its own thoughts and myths and beliefs like a, a tablecloth on top of the features of the landscape so that you have to kind of lift that covering and peer beneath in hopes of getting to the bottom of it and finding what's actually going on. Uh, C.S. Lewis, uh, who wrote the Narnia books, Lying the Witch in the Wardrobe and all that, he uh, was very connected emotionally to that landscape. A apparently, in his childhood home, 
there was a, a a painting on the wall of the Golden Valley, that that valley that the that Arthur's Stone overlooks, and for C.S. Lewis in his childhood, when he was a little boy, he thought it was a painting of heaven. It, it was it was all done in a beautiful golden glow, uh, you know. Hence, go, the nearby one of the nearby villages is Doorstone. Door is there in the landscape, and that's been misunderstood as Door. The, the French for gold, hence Golden Valley. But, but it, it was embedded in, in C.S. Lewis's imagination. And he also he also spent time there in his childhood and, and in his adulthood. He went to that part of Herefordshire and that part of Wales, and he, he was acquainted with that. And that, that landscape inspired his Narnia. And he populated that landscape then with the characters and the mythical beasts, the fawn and the and the giants and all the rest of it, the, and the ice witch, the white witch that, that, that are all the way through the, the Narnia books. And he's, he, the Arthur Stone itself became the stone table. Now, anyone who's read The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, or, wardrobe, or indeed seen the film, uh, will remember that Aslan, the lion, offers himself up to the White Witch. She's evil. She is badness. And he he offers himself up and he is duly sacrificed on the stone table. The the, the White Witch plunges a dagger into his heart and he dies. And all the baddies disappear, leaving Aslan's body on the table. Uh, They've shaved him as well. They've shaved his mane and shaved his hair off. Uh, And the two Pevensey girls, uh, Lucy and Susan, come and find him. And they are crying over his body. And around them are mice. Mice have come. And they think the mice are coming to pick over his body, but then they realise that the mice are just eating the, the, the ropes that bind them to the, to the stone table. So they're actually freeing him. And the girls can't, can't work out why they would be doing that, because he's dead anyway. But then Aslan comes back to life. So obviously there's, there's similarities to the, to the, to the Jesus, to the, to the Christian crucifixion of someone offering himself up to salve the sins of another uh, that's that's you know jesus christ died to to take away all of our sins so there's a there's a clear message there um but but c.s lewis uh, you know bound all of that up with with the landscape of arthur stone so all of these things are stirred in together and myths are not just makey uppy fantasy make believe they are fragments of the truth and they're inspired by the truth so all of that is all of that is there, and I find I find at the moment because so many people are writing to me in so much pain, uh, and they are they have distilled their understanding of what's going on all the way back to a fight between light and dark, or good and evil, or right and wrong. Then you look at a landscape like the Golden Valley and Arthur Stone and the Skirred Mountain, and all the myth and legend that has grown up around that landscape and it just it all seems to me you know as, as evidence it's all evidence of you know of, of people in need telling themselves and each other stories in order to feel better and it's in the nature of the most important stories that they are actually a reflection of the truth you know people are reaching out for and coming close to touching the truth when they tell each other these stories and that's why they last. I think the old politics to some extent have betrayed their true colours or they've revealed their true colours. You know, for the longest time, it was the idea was maintained that left and right were following different paths and that therefore it mattered at some fundamental level whether you had a government of the left or a government of the right but what happened during COVID and what's still happening now, all the way through that, both left and right came together to say the same things. It was one narrative. And, and essentially, left and right were competing with one another. They were trying to outdo one another in terms of being stricter, imposing harsher and harsher restrictions on people's lives being even more egregious in their erosion of, of people's rights. The, the, the one side just seemed to be trying to outdo the other in stark contrast to what you might have expected, which was one side or the other might have been saying, no, we must go in the other way entirely. And that's not what happened. 
they, they came together as one so that people looked on. It's like that bit at the end of Animal Farm, you know, where the, the, the pigs have taken over Animal Farm. And at the end of Animal Farm, they invite the humans from the neighbouring farms to come for a meeting. And the other animals, the other animals are us. They're just the, they're just the plebs, the proles. They, they, they drift up to the windows of the farmhouse and look inside to the kitchen where the meeting's taking place. And the pigs are sitting around the table and the the humans are sitting around the table. And, and f- to the other animals, they can no longer tell the difference. They can't see where the pigs stop and the humans start. So that there's this tragic realisation at the end for the other animals, which is us, which is the proletariat, that it doesn't really matter, that the masters are always the same, that they're coming from the same place. And that seems to be what was revealed during lockdown, that old illusion of left and right being different, or, or the notion that either of them might have had our best interests at heart. That's all. For so many people, that has evaporated like, you know, it's a mirage. Pe- pe- people just don't see it. And now, and now that the mirage has gone for so many people, they'll never see it again. Once you Once you realise the truth, you can't unsee it. <laughs> You know, once you see it, you can't unsee it, and and I think that I think that is what's happened. And so, in, it's it's in that sudden absence, with people who trusted politicians, trusted, oh, if only we could get a Labour government, or if only we could get a Conservative government, or whatever, that motivation for people has been exposed as meaningless, baseless, founded upon an illusion, and and so because people, so many people feel that they won't get that salvation from politics, politicians, from governments or the institutions, they're looking elsewhere. And and so it's become, it's not left and right, it's become right and wrong, good and bad. It's for a lot of people, they've they've pushed through, (laughs) like in in Narnia, they've kind of pushed through the, the fur coats and they've found themselves in a whole new world that they didn't know existed. You know, it's like Narnia all over again. They've, they've found themselves in a strange new place uh, and, they're, and, they're, and they're trying to understand what the rules might be and where help might be found. And, you know, so people are, in, are, are invoking myths like Arthur and people who had faith in Jesus Christ. It, both those stories take you to the same place that cometh the hour cometh the man. People are, are are looking to and hoping for a time when an Arthur or a Jesus will come back to right the wrong. It's amazing. Many people all around the world are feeling betrayed and let down by those to whom previously they would have looked for safety. It, it, it you know it. It's suddenly like finding, I don't know, a a loving parent, I don't know, revealed as the opposite of a loving parent. Abusive, an abusive parent. And people's faith in the structures and the institutions of society have been rocked. And for a lot of people, that that faith might never come back. And they're looking to put their faith in something else. I think that's why you get a lot of people talking about alternatives as a lot of people want to start again, a lot of people want to start alternative institutions. They want a government in waiting, or, or they want to, f- or they want to come together as communities of like-minded people. Uh, you know that it, it's become as profound as that for many people that they're so let down by those whom they previously trusted that they'll never trust them again. <laughs>